What up guys, GregGamer34 here. So today we're going to be starting the CPU tutorial. So in the description below you will have a schematic and there will be a world da download. Every time I post a video from for this tutorial series, both the schematic and the world download will be updated towards f for the beginning of that video being released. So for instance, we're going to begin working on this right now so you will get a schematic of this before we start work on it and you are expected to then build that thing onto it yourself the beginning of the next video I will post a schematic with that part have being built on it and and the world would have been updated also with that and then we will it'll start again so you can choose to pick up in the series wherever you want and build along from wherever you want I'm gonna to try to make this as friendly as possible so we're not going to be building the adder and the registers from the ground up instead we're just going to be starting with them and then turning this that I've placed here into a CPU together this way we don't have to f focus on the nitty-gritty we can just build a CPU and program it and have fun and, and skip the hard stuff. If you guys want to learn how this stuff works, there's tutorials on the internet for all of this stuff. Maybe maybe not these most compact, but the idea holds that once you can do it with uh, an adder and some registers, you could then build it yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be color coding this as we build along. The blue here is the ALU, the yellow is the registers, and gray is busing. So what's different about this one from the other one I built is these registers are flipped. So this is the output and this is the input to the register over here um, and then it's symmetrical over here so this is the output here and then this is the input over here so the outputs are closest the outputs are the innermost and the in inputs are the outermost and then on my uh, my other CPU that I built going over there that one is the other way around that one is with the writes in the inside and the reads on the outside. So this one, first off, is going to be reversed to try to make things a little quicker. My logic here is the write cycle is on some delay. We we time the write to be at the pulse there at the, the moment we want it, so that we don't get a continuous loop reading a read. So like if we do register three equals register three plus one, we don't want it to stay open so long that it write, it does plus one twice. It opens the loop for too long, so because the write pulse comes at a specific time later on we can afford some delay there meanwhile the read pulse we want to get as quick as possible to get the calculation done so I'm prioritizing read delay over write delay and that's why this design is laid out the way it is so you can see here that it's only one tick of delay to read all the data here so our torch actually comes right here so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and we have one extra block that we could have went. So it powers into here, and then that'll obviously be, oh, well, that's not updated in the world. So this is something that we have to build together because it's not updated in the world because I already saved the schematic. So I guess we will build this right here, guys, and just uh, hook up our inputs because I forgot to do that already. And so we're starting this, this tutorial assuming that you already know how a data loop and stuff like that works. So the idea here is the read output comes into the inputs of the ALU and the output of the ALU goes into the inputs of the registers. The other thing that comes on the CPU already around this block of sh stuff already is the decoder mechanism. So we have the read decoder here and a read decoder here and then the two registers but or the two register banks share a common write decoder. So nothing's programmed yet. We're going to be doing that in the, the tutorial. So but the first thing I want to do in the tutorial is get a shifter on here because over here we have OR, right shift, invert A, invert B, carry in, and flood carry. But if we follow this right shift line, this right shift line comes here to nothing. So we have to build that. So we're going to get started with that. Okay, so here's here's the right shifter or aka a down shifter so this is what it looks like and we're gonna go build this over there so we just have to remember oh we got a buddy here we just have to remember that the top input the lower inputs on the bottom 
uh, on, on the right, whoops. So we're going to be doing this in blue. We can just go like this. Uh, shifter, not a shift register. There's a difference. Okay, and then we're going to go like this. Good. And boom. And boom. Alright, and so basically how this works, the shifter works, is it's um it's a mux. So one way it's going to allow stuff to go, it's going to it's a, it's going to allow the output of it, and the other way it's not going to allow the output of it. So let me show you how this works here. So we'll get a bit stacked up like this. Uh, this is the whole thing right here. Actually, um, I'm going to be able to stack it in a second here. So I'm ass assuming you guys have World Edit to build. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take a position here, and we're going to take a position here. Oh my god, the server's lagging. Alright, so I took a first position, that block, not the top, just just the block, not the redstone. And the other one I took the redstone, not the block. So I, I, I took that. Alright, anyway, so it is laggy. Stack. Uh, we need seven of them. Oh no! I guess I messed that up. Oh my god! The server's so laggy. Be your back, guys. Okay, so we're gonna click there, and we're gonna click the block here. And actually, I wanna. Oops bring it out like that and uh, actually if we could here make that our first position and now we should stack seven perfect um, oh and the only thing we have to do then is stack that seven times like that alright cool so now what we want to happen is we want the output to normally not be shifted. So if this is the input, we want to normally come out this one, which means we want this one to be open and this one to be closed. So if we want this one to be closed, we put on our tower here. So we build a slab tower. So redstone, and so we want this one to be powered with a torch at the bottom. Lag. All right. Anyway, that'll update, and then this one. Yep, there goes it updated. And then this one over here, we want to be like this. And uh, I guess I'll just do it here. Yeah. this, like the last one. I could have world edited this, but uh, I guess I chose not to. And then we're going to stick a repeater on it, like this. And we're going to then, actually we're going to stick the repeater right like this. Slab. Okay, and that works. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go like that, and then here we can uh, 
we want to power into this, we can do it like this, I guess. This isn't the most elegant, but uh, alright, then I guess we can get rid of the slide up here and kind of mimic that side there. Okay, now they at least match. And uh, now our right shift, this line here, can freely. right here. So I haven't done any uh, repeaters, signal strength stuff yet. Uh, we'll worry about that later. But anyway, so uh, let's see if this works. So let's input some numbers here. We'll, uh, oh, I got a I guess I have to fix this too if this is something I did not fix. I was just messing around with some registers here. Okay, so uh, that should be fixed. Alright, and we can enter values like this. So let's just get three bits and I'll get a lever. Lever. Boom, boom. Alright, so if I put in a, well, currently we're getting an output and there shouldn't be an output. Is there any input going into this thing right now? There wasn't a moment ago. Alright, let me figure out what's going on. Alright guys, I think I figured out what it is. So, uh, it's this right here. There, and then that ends up interfering like that. That should have got rid of our value in the output here. If I actually update it, okay. So I figured out the problem. So it does have to do with this guy here. So that powers into a block, and there's like an empty space. So it's going to be hard to get to, so how we do it is we're going to go like that. I'm going to place that. I'm going to place... Th there we go. So all we did is we made sure that that stacked down. Then this is going to come over. We placed the redstone dust in there in a cavity. We're going to close it up. And there. Now our editor's fine again. Okay, so back to what we were doing is what we can do. we can come over here and take that down like that we can come over one more and link up that so now we can come over here we can put a lever here and we can put the number 4 in okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say this these are our 8 bits. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cool. So we put in a 4 and we got a 4 out, right? Same same line we input on is the same line we output on. Cool. So if we put in a 6, we get a 6. And now when we flip our downshift lever, it moves that 6 to a 3. And then if we here, I'll put uh, some lamps. So you can see. So we have a downshifter. On command, we can downshift. So, there, uh, there we go. That's the first part of this tutorial. I think that's long enough. Um, so th all we did is we added a Shifter, uh, shifter to the output here. We hooked it up to our opcode area where all of our opcodes come and meet out. And then, oh, the reason that uh, these lines are shaped like this or, or look like this um, is because we're going to be hooking up a screen here. And so, because the outputs were here instead of on the outside, I had to be creative with how I got the outputs up and around. So, that's how we're doing that. Getting immediates in there is a, is a little bit easier because we can just get access right over there. 
Um, and, well, I mean, actually, I guess an even easier way to get an immediate in would be just input them right, right here, right like that. Um, okay, I might have to think some of that through for immediates, but uh, I'm going to now go get a world edit capture of just the core of the old CPU and compare it to the size of this one. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, and here's the old one. Here's the old core. Look how massive it is. The ALU is actually longer than the registers, and the registers are three wide per cell instead of two wide. And the ALU is larger than it. And then we come to our old or the new one here. And then we could just look at the size difference. Just look at the size difference. So I might be able to make this a little bit easier to see here. So if we uh, set position one here. Oh, lag. Position two here. Let's. Oh, come on! All right, let's copy or let's cut it from from here. Hopefully, it doesn't rubber band me around. Cause that could be dangerous when we're doing some kind of stuff like this. All right, and uh, paste, and we do the minus A to get rid of the air. Okay, so this might make a, a comparison a little easier. Okay, so uh, we're going from from double the size to half the size. So this is our new control unit. Hopefully that means a huge speed increase. And uh, wow, look at look at this the engineering at its finest. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out. This is some really ancient design stuff here. I mean, very primitive CCA adder, very primitive registers, but it was just to prove a point that this type of architecture could be implemented and now we're refining the architecture slowly with better micro architecture and we're just using the same shift register that we had on this guy over here um, oh and the other thing to note is they're flipped around um, oh wait no they're not I lied they're not flipped around yeah so the shift register here is right here or not register sorry shifter somebody said register earlier and it got me thinking that it's register but it's not it's just a shifter so we just borrowed that design and stuck it right on the output oh no they are flipped around okay yeah oh and uh... we just rubber banded pretty hard so yeah this is the first part of the tutorial i'll try to make them smoother from now on i just wanted to get this one whipped up and give you guys the schematics and stuff like that peace out